Alrighty guys, today's video will be a tutorial on how to use Fusion 360. We'll start off by going over the basic tools in the program, and then we'll take a screenshot of the Simple Little Life build along, drag it on in here, trace it out, and be able to convert it into a PDF or a CAD file that can be used in a 3D printer slicer or in Lightburn so you can cut it out with a laser. We'll be starting off with the basics here, so I will put timestamps down below so you can skip around. So we have a blank project here. The first thing we're gonna be doing today and probably the area the program will spend the most time in is gonna be in the sketch section. Now what you generally do, especially if you're doing a 3D model, is you'll draw out a sketch and then you'll create a 3D model from the sketch. So in example, you'll come up here to this create sketch. You'll pick the plane that you wanna draw on. So we're gonna go with this one right here. This is the front plane. And then if you notice on the left, you have, a, uh, you have a tree bar over here. You have this sketch that you just created and that you're in and editing right now. You can draw any shape in here. We're just gonna draw a square real fast. And then say finish sketch. So now, now you have a sketch and it's drawn on the front plane. In Fusion 360, what that allows you to do is to turn this into a 3D object. So you can use this extrude function click on the, uh, the sketch that you have, and then you can drag it out and make a cube. So right there, that's like the basic functionality of Fusion 360. You draw a complicated sketch and you can extrude it out. And you can extrude it along a path. You can do all kinds of stuff. Now for the sake of drawing a knife, uh, you probably won't need to use this at all. But I just want to throw out that the extrude function is, is built on top of the sketches. All right, so I'm just gonna go back here. I'm gonna do Control Z to undo. Then we're gonna go all the way back. Okay, so let's dig into the sketch and some sketch features. We're gonna to go to Create Sketch. We're gonna click on the front plane, and then we're in the space that we can edit sketches. At the top left, you can see we have a bunch of options. We have lines, squares, circles, and stuff like that. But we're gonna go over some of these tools right here in the middle, the Modify Tools. So the first one we're going to go over is called the trim tool, and you'll use this a lot when drawing knives. To demonstrate the trim tool, we'll, we'll do something fun. We'll draw a square again, and then we'll put a line straight through that square. Now, say that I want to keep the tails of these lines on each side of the square, but I want to get rid of the line that's going through the square. So what you can do is you can click on this trim tool, which looks like a pair of scissors, and then you can click on the line in the middle of the square. And what it does is it trims it at the boundaries. Now you can hit undo. And you could have done the same thing with the tails. You can hit the trim tool. You can get rid of that one. And then you can get rid of this one. Now you have a line only in the middle of the square. So that's the trim tool and you will use that a ton. Uh, you can also use a uh, fillet tool. So what this does is it puts a radius on the corner. I'm sure I pronounced it wrong, I normally do. Uh, but say we want a radius on the corner of this square, you can just click that guy. You can click both of the lines that you want radius, and then you can select the size of your radius. Let's make this uh, 0.15 or something. Now you have a nice radius on that uh, previous square corner. You can also do a chamfer. So say we select these two, come up to modify, hit chamfer, equal distance, and now you can create a chamfer on those two lines. Super useful stuff. Uh, you'll find yourself using this frequently when, when drawing stuff out in CAD. The next thing we'll go over is mirroring. And say you have this shape right here and you wanna repeat it. And say you wanna repeat it uh, on the right, so you wanna repeat it over here, but you wanna do it an inch away. So what you can do is you can come over here with the line tool, you can click on your uh, furthest right line of the shape. You can say, hey, look, 0.5 inches. So that's a half inch away. Then I'm gonna draw a vertical line. It can be as tall as you want. Hit the escape button. And now you have a line in which you want to mirror this image on top of. So I'm gonna come in here and select this, this shape. I'm going to hit the mirror tool. It's going to ask me what line I would like to mirror it on. It's going to be the one we just drew. So I'm going to click select here, mirror line. 
and then OK. And now you can see that we have two images, and they are one inch apart from each other. You can verify that by clicking on the line icon, selecting anywhere in this shape, drawing over 90 degrees to the other shape, and you can see that we're one inch away. And that's how you use the mirror tool. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is how to select items in CAD. You can click on the top left and drag, drag down to the bottom right, or you can click at the bottom right and drag up to the top left. These do different things. For instance, if you click down at the top left and drag down to the bottom right, it will only select things that are completely within the square. So for instance, if I drag into the second square we just mirrored, you'll notice that it does not select this top line because I didn't have the entire top line in the selection box. On the flip side, if you bottom right scroll up to the top left with your box, it will select everything that is touching the inside of your selection box. So notice in this scenario, it selects all this, even though the entire shape was not in the selection box. It's very useful to know uh, and you'll find yourself using that frequently depending on what you're trying to do. Another thing you'll find yourself using pretty frequently is the move function. So we're going to take some lines here and we're going to create a triangle. And I want to move this triangle so that this bottom right point here lines up with the top left point of the original square. So to do that, we select this triangle. We hit the M button on our keyboard for move and we are presented with some options. Now the default is you can use these arrows to move it around. This works fine in certain applications, but it can be hard to pinpoint where you want this point to land. What I like to use frequently is the point to point movement. And you can see that option right here on the move and copy panel. Go ahead and click that. It's gonna ask you to select your origin point on the object that you are trying to move. So I'm gonna click this bottom right point of the triangle. And then it says, hey, where do you want to put it? And I want to put that point directly on the original square top left corner. Once you have it where you want it, you just hit OK. And you've got that guy moved over. You'll use that a ton. Uh, moving is, is very useful. Copy and paste works the same way. You select your item, Control C, Control V. And then you can make a copy and move it away. And you can, you can also use point to point after you've copied. So I can say point to point. I want to hit that to here. Hit OK. Now you've got triangles all over. When you're trying to figure out how long stuff is, uh, you can use this inspect tool here. This will let you know how far things are from each other and also how long specific lines are. So you hit inspect. You can see this measurement pane comes up. Say I want to know how long this line is of the triangle. Click on that guy. And you can see that it's 4.591 inches. If you want to see how far away two points are from each other, uh, say I want to know the tips of these two triangles, you can click on the point itself as point one. You can click on the second point as point two, and you can see that they are 21.63 inches apart. So that tool can be super useful. It also works with radiuses. You can hit inspect. You can click on a circle. You can see the radius and diameter and things of that nature. I think it also gives you the circumference of the circle. Before we move on, one more thing on moving is how to move stuff around uh, to the midpoint or to a specific quadrant of a circle. So for instance, say I wanna put the center of the circle onto the midpoint of this line on the triangle. Now, this may not be the best way to do this, and if somebody knows a better way, please let me know in the comments. What I normally do is I will actually draw a line at the midpoint. So when you go over to midpoint in CAD, you can see a little triangle that indicates that you're at the midpoint. I'll start a line here, draw it out into the ether somewhere, hit escape. And what this does is it generates a point here that I can move to. I found that when you just select an item, when you hit move and you do point to point, it won't let you just select the midpoint of any of these lines. It has to have a a leader line that's that's connected to it in order to connect to it. Now, I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong here, so like I said, in the comments, if you know a better way, please let me know. Right now though, if I wanna move the center of this circle to a midpoint, I'll draw a little leader line. That creates a point right here. I could say point to point. 
I can select my first point and then select my second point, first point, second point, and move the center of the circle to that leader line. And that works fine. No problem with doing that. It just takes a little extra time and then you come back and delete this line. Now, if you want to move the edge of your circle to that point, you kind of have to do the same thing. You have to draw a line from the center of the circle to the edge. And then you select the entire thing. You hit the move key, which is M, point to point. Now I can select the edge of the circle. I can select the center of the line over here, move it point to point, and you're good to go. And then you can come back and you can, can delete these lines. So that's how I move stuff to midpoints and things of that nature. It works okay. It's a little cumbersome, uh, but so far it hasn't bothered me too bad. Okay, we're briefly going to go over some of the 3D stuff, and then we'll get into drawing a knife. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this complex shape here. We're going to draw a square. We're going to hit finish sketch. We're going to hold the shift button and then the button on my scroll on the mouse. And then you can kind of move this guy in 3D. You can see the top right box is moving and that kind of lets you know where you're at. So this is our sketch in 3D. I'm going to hit the extrude button and then pull this guy out. So now we have a 14 inch box. Hit enter. And you'll notice that when you do that, you create a new body. And a body is another item that you can, uh, you can call out here on this tree on the top left. So I have bodies, I have sketches. Uh, the sketch is what you use to build the body. So now that we have this cube here, uh, we can do stuff to it. So for instance, say I want to put a pocket in the center of this cube that goes all the way through it. You can create a new sketch. And instead of selecting one of these three planes down here at the bottom left, I'm going to sketch on the body itself. So I'm going to sketch on this uh, side of our body. I'm going to click that. You're back into the sketch template. I'm going to put a pocket through the center that's shaped like a hole. I'm just going to make a circle. Hit finish sketch. Hold down shift. Hold down my mouse scroll. Pull to the side so that I can see what I'm doing hit the extrude button again. Now, the first time we extruded, we created the body. So I clicked on what I wanted to extrude. And if you just extrude in space, it's gonna create a body. In this case, it would join the two together. But I said I wanted to cut this body. So all you have to do is extrude into it. And you can see the operation here changed to cut. So it will cut a hole in the body that you had previously created. Hit okay. And now we have a hole going through our cube. Note that our fillet and chamfer tools still work in 3D. So if I click on this edge right here and I hit fillet, I can make a big curve here if I wanted to. Enter. Same thing with the uh, chamfers. Chamfers work the same way too. You can also do a bunch of uh, cool stuff in CAD when it comes to threads and things of that nature. You can go into the create section and select hole. Uh, you can select where you want a hole and then you can actually give it threads so you can say hey i want this to be a tapped hole and i want it to end and at the bottom of the hole i want it to be flat and then you can give it some standard uh standard thread sizes so you, uh, you can make this a quarter 20 hole and uh, which is pretty small on this model but you can see that now you have a a quarter 20 threaded hole through your model. Very useful if you're designing parts. And that's just a, a quick taste of some of the things you can do in 3D. And now we're gonna get on to probably what most of you guys are curious on is how to draw a knife in CAD. So I took a screenshot from the Simple Alive Build Along video. And I have that screenshot on my desktop. So I'm just gonna bring it in to this program as a canvas. If you notice, there's an insert tab here at the top. I'm going to click Canvas. I'm going to go Insert from my computer. It's then going to ask me what face I want to insert the file. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to select this one here. So you can see that I put the face on there. I'm just going to move it over here, I guess. 
You can see this is my screenshot. Interestingly enough, it's kind of flipped. That's okay. I'm going to hit okay. And you can see that we now have our simple little life build along screenshot. Next thing we have to do is scale this image so that when we trace it in CAD and we have the final output, it's the appropriate size. Okay, at the top left here in our tree, you can see we have a canvases section now. We're going to scale this image using the calibrate tool. So you right click on the canvas and you go to calibrate. Then basically what it's asking you to do is to select a distance with two points and then you name that distance because it's a distance that you know. So on this image, we know this six and three eighths. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select point number one right there. And then I'm gonna select point number two right here. Note that the image that was pulled in is only a half inch, uh, but in reality, we're gonna calibrate this up or scale this up to 6.375. We're gonna hit enter. And now this image is to scale in Fusion 360. So now that we have the canvas scaled appropriately, we're going to create a sketch. This will be our main sketch. It's asking us what plane we wanna sketch on. So we're gonna sketch on the I guess this is the back plane. I'm actually gonna to try to just click the canvas. And then we're gonna use all the tools we just talked about to basically trace this screenshot in the sketch. So there aren't many straight lines on this. I'm gonna start off with this uh, spline tool and we're just gonna go straight to the edge here. So I'm gonna click on the spline tool. I'm gonna to zoom in. I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can. I'll probably try following the outside of the pencil. So let's be pretty Pretty close. I'd rather draw it a little too big than a little too small. I'm going to click our first point here. And the spline tool is cool because uh, you just put points along your curve and it will bend it for you. And then you can come back and kind of adjust these bends. All right, when you get to your last one, you just press enter. And now you have a, a curve along the edge of the knife. If you don't like some of these points, you can zoom in a little bit and move them around. Uh, it depends on how precise you want to get here. I think that looks pretty good. We're going to use that same function along the spine of this knife, which looks like it's one big curve. Okay, looks like we got a whole profile here of the knife. Let's go ahead and put our, our, our holes in here. Looks like he has a hole up here. It's about, we're just going to make that a quarter inch. Okay. Looks like we've got a smaller one down here. I'm going to try to do a size that I actually have a drill bit for. Uh, so we'll do 11 sixteenths, which is 0.1719. Okay. Looks approximately right, right there. And then we'll just put some eighth inch pinholes. Now, in order to get these in the center of the handle, what I like to do is use the line. And I'm just going to draw a line from the top of the spine to the handle and then I'll draw my eighth of an inch hole right at the midpoint and I'll do that for all three of these kind of helps give me an idea of, of where these should land uh, in the handle we'll go ahead and draw the front of our handle here uh, we can also use the spline so let's just say we do something like this. We can play with this however we want, depending on the style you're going for. I think I'm going to bring it up a little bit like that. Okay. For fun, we'll also put in the grind here. 
draw a straight line there. And then I'll put the curve line going this way. Enter. All right. I can use the fillet tool here. Fillet tool. Put a radius in on our grind line. Enter. So this is our simple little life build along knife drawn out. If you want to get an idea of what your sketch looks like without the background, you can just click this little eyeball next to the canvas. And you can actually turn off a lot of these uh, nodes here. So you can come over here to the right and turn the points off and you can turn the dimensions off and you can get an idea of what your knife looks like. So that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do uh, just before we export this guy is I'm going to make a copy. Control C, Control V. I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to make just a blade copy or just a uh, profile copy. And then I'm going to make a copy for just a handle. So to do that, we're going to use uh, some of the features we talked about earlier. We're going to use this trim tool. So I select the whole thing here, which you don't have to do. Select the trim tool and I'm going to hold down the left click and basically get rid of everything in the middle so that now I have a nice clean uh, bar stock profile. And in this case, I'm going to get rid of the blade so that I have just the handle. Now at this point, uh, you can do a bunch of things and it depends on how you want to get this drawing out into the real world. If you want to cut it out on a laser engraver, all you have to do is come up here and right click on your sketch and save as a DXF file. This DXF file could be dragged in to Lightburn or pretty much any other software uh, that you'll be using with a laser and you can cut out your profile. If you wanna do a 3D printer template, what you would have to do is come in here and turn these in to a 3D image uh, with the extrude tool. So for instance, you come over here to finish sketch uh, I like to hold the shift button and get an angle here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to click on just this image, then hit the extrude tool. I'll make it an eighth of an inch. And now we have a body. Once you have this body, uh, you can export this body as an STL file by coming up here, clicking export. Uh, you can either export it as a step or an F STL file. Either one of these work. Once you have this step or STL file downloaded, you can pull it into a 3D slicer and print out your profile. If you're not gonna be doing any of that and you just want a PDF, uh, that's what we're gonna do next. So let's go back here. We'll go back to just a sketch. Uh, we just got rid of the body. Let's see, we're back into the sketch. Okay, so all you want is something you can print out. And there's a couple ways to do this. The native functionality in Fusion 360 for printing out templates is a little cumbersome in my opinion. Honestly, what I generally do if I want to print it out is I will export this as a DXF file and bring it into NanoCAD, which is free. And its print functions are actually a little more simple. So I'm going to show you that first, and then I'll show you how to do it in Fusion 360. So step one is to right click on the sketches, go to save as DXF file. We're just going to call it demo, and it's being saved to my desktop. And then I'm going to open NanoCAD which is a free CAD software as well. I'm going to go to open, top left, go to the desktop. I'm going to go to all supported file types. You can see this is our demo. Double click on that. And while it's upside down, uh, you have it in here. And some of the same functions apply. You know, you can select all this stuff. Uh, you can rotate this around and you can print it out. And the print function here is just control P. You can then uh, select what you want to print. So you can see the windows down here and your items up here. Uh, so you can go to window. You can select what you actually want to print. You can do a uh, one to one scale and then hit plot and it will print this guy out on a piece of paper and you're good to go. And like I said, honestly, this is what I generally do because it's it's pretty easy. If you want to do it in Fusion 360, it does require you also making this into a 3D item uh, like we 
like we just did for the printing. So you'll say finish sketch. You'll click on the blade profile that you would like to get into a PDF. You'll go to extrude. You'll bring it out. You hit okay. Now you have a 3D item. With this 3D item, you can then turn it into a drawing. You go to the top left under design, drawing from design. And then you're going to be creating a new drawing over here. So you want the full assembly. Uh, you can use some standards, which you don't have to do. We want it in inches and we want it on just a big piece of paper. In your case, you may want to do it on eight and a half by 11. If that's the paper size your printer can handle. And you say, okay. Then it opens up the drawing pane or the detail drawing pane. And you take your knife. Uh, and you click anywhere in here and it puts it in there. Now you can see the scale here is one to two. Let's make that one to one. Uh, we can go ahead and select OK. You know, we could do some basic stuff. We can rotate it around if it was really long so that it actually fits on the page. Uh, we can actually fill out this information down here or you can just delete this information and put multiple copies of the knife on there. Uh, you can do all that stuff. Uh, basically, but now you can just print this out or you can save this as a PDF. You can do that by coming up here, hitting uh, print or control P. Then you can select your printer or Microsoft print the PDF and get the knife out of the program like that. Like I said, generally, if I want to make a PDF, I normally just bring it into NanoCAD. Most of the time nowadays, I'm taking the DXF file, putting it into Lightburn and uh, cutting it out on the laser. That's my preferred method, and it works pretty good. All right, so that is how you draw a knife in Fusion 360 and how you get that knife out of Fusion 360 into the real world. This simple little life build along is currently happening. So I'm going to take these DXF files and the PDF, and I'm going to put it in to the open source library that I released at the end of last year. That way anyone can go in there and download this knife and not have to go through uh, drawing it in CAD and maybe we can get more people to participate in uh, Jeremy's Simple Little Life build along, which would be really cool. If you have any questions on what we did today, or if you have any suggestions that I could use in CAD to speed up my process, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.